In this last video in our series, Douglas Harding is discussing the living of one's life from the first person perspective. There are many people offering many answers that help us understand ourselves. However, Douglas is offering a unique opportunity to look and see and discover and to test for ourselves what it is like exactly where we are. Douglas offers some simple and precise experiments that bring us home. I invite you to participate in the experience of this video and listen closely as Douglas means exactly what he says. I should like to say something about the uh, difficulties, immense difficulties, uh, in seeing what we see. Seems to me that we, uh, as members of the human club, uh, we do not see what we see. Uh, we see what the club wishes us to see, allows us to see, what the rules of the club permit. And uh, in, in this uh, has its uses. Uh, it, just to, two quick examples of this. Uh, when I see a, a man uh, over there, uh, 300 yards away, uh, I don't see a teeny weeny little man. I see a full-sized man distant. Well, in fact, I don't. The club says. It's a, it's a full-size man, but he's distant. Well, I can't see the distance. And what I actually see is a tiny weeny man, uh, but I interpret him as full-size. Another one is uh, in the car. Um, I uh, uh, am programmed, in the case of programming, I'm programmed uh, to uh, see, ha, 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 or hallucinate, rather, the still countryside. And it is, uh, perhaps has its uh, uses. I mean, I think it also has a great cost uh, uh, attached to it, a, a very heavy price tag, but it's not uh, terrible, perhaps. And uh, there are many other um, applications of this principle. Uh, the club only allows us to see what uh, uh, society reckons uh, has some value for s society and for the club purposes. But there is one area, I think, I think you would agree, Maureen and, and um, Sean, the one area where hallucinating here to the club's order and, and uh, uh, pretending to see, thinking we see uh, what we see, uh, but in fact we are hallucinating like mad. One area where uh, it is dangerous and damaging is in the area of personal relationships. And uh, here, language says uh, that, for example, Maureen, you and I are face to face, and in every language that I know or have heard of, uh, that is the story, a story of symmetry. Uh, face to face, well, that is a, a story of confrontation, isn't it? <clears throat> the, the club says that you and I are confronting one another like that. And Sean, you and I are confronting one another like that. And the viewer, you and I, are confronting one another like that. That's what the rule, the club rule is, face to face, face to face, face to face, symmetry. And uh, this spreads from personal relationships, doesn't it, to every facet of our life. Uh, family against family, organization against organization. Of course, football team against football team, that might not be so sinister, but when it comes to nation against nation or power block against power block, it's pretty sinister. 
And it, it seems to me that the hallucination here, seeing what the card allows us to see, is a, a devilish thing. I mean, it really lands us in the end in hell. Because what is hell? Surely it is a place where we are all up against one another, uh, giving each other a hard time and uh, 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 cutting out, really, uh, the likelihood or even the possibility of loving one another. And uh, uh, this uh, business of confrontation is something we're going to address in the experiment we're going to do presently. Now, <clears throat> this is a case of conditioning and programming. Now, I'm programmed uh, by society, by language. I'm programmed uh, when I meet Maureen in the home, in the street, in uh, the office, uh, in the supermarket. I'm programmed uh, to be face to face with Maureen uh, like that and equally with Sean. Uh, because uh, uh, society has been quite uh, specific about that. Uh, in these situations, in the open air, so to say, wherever I meet my friends, wherever I meet you, uh, we are programmed to be like that. Well, you see, we do have a way out of this because there are certain situations uh, we can, uh, we can uh, create where we haven't been programmed uh, to see uh, uh, what we're told to see and where we are therefore at liberty to see what we see. There are certain situations like that. And this um, experiment we're going to do, you and I together, uh, we're going to do that experiment. Uh, 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 it will reveal, I think, the truth uh, about confrontation, or rather the fact that it is, in fact, uh, not, a li uh, not true uh, as regards uh, oneself and another person. Uh, it will reveal that fact. Why? And why does it reveal that fact? Because the situation hasn't been taken care of by the club. This kind of caught the club on the hop, you see. I mean, what we've done, to get behind the rules of the club, set up a situation which it hasn't taken care of and hasn't programmed us to meet. And this is immensely important because uh, I think it just really, in the end, makes a difference between heaven and hell. I mean, hell is where people are like this, isn't it? I mean, hell is really like that. Hell is other people, said, uh, was it uh, Sartre? Hell is other people. Other people in, in this relationship, that's L. We're up against one another and uh, uh, shutting one another out. And uh, uh, this is, is this true? I mean, or is it hallucination? Are we hallucinating this or is it a fact? And this experiment, which we're going to do, uh, you and I presently, uh, this experiment we're going to do will uh, go into this and see whether we can't uh, see through this club situation uh, that is set up of confrontation, see through to this thing when we're busted, you and I, busted wide open for one another, you and I, you and I. So that's what uh, we uh, would like to do. And presently, uh, why uh, Sean and, and, and Maureen are going to demonstrate with the tube there uh, uh, how it's done, how they do it, in order that uh, you and I shall get the clue as to how to do it on the screen. Have you any, any thoughts about this? It would just uh, seem to me, Douglas, that this question, uh, as you say, of confrontation really is at the root of perhaps of so many what we would call our difficulties, our difficulties in personal relationships, in families, in, uh, in our countries, uh, with war. It, this seems to be, to me, 
an absolutely critical question. Fundamental yeah. and essential, really, for our survival and yeah. our well-being on this earth. And, uh, so while we may be addressing it at, a, indeed, a very personal and intimate level, I think the implications yeah. of this question are immense. And yeah. This is surely a, a fundamental and really important investigation. And, and uh, the thing that just occurred to me when you were speaking is, it's not because we're wicked that we do this so much, it's because we are not being truthful. It's not, it's not because we're not good, but it's because we're not truthful. Right. And it's the truth which sets us free here, because uh, the correction of this is not to reform ourselves and let's be good people who don't confront one another, but let's be truthful people who can see that they don't. Well, it's the one area, you see, when we're young, Douglas, we're, we're children, we, we count on our, our world, our parents and our teachers, etc. We count on them to tell us the truth. Yeah. And in this particular instance, perhaps they're not. And we, so we, we, we just believe it, and then we forget to investigate yeah. that. Yes. And, uh, I think it's time to re-examine some very basic yes. things. Here. And this isn't so much that they have come and uh, parents come along and teachers come along and said, now you're face to face, Douglas and Sean. It's, it's implicit. It's so taken for granted, they don't bother. I mean, the really sinister conditioning is not something you spell out, it's something implicit in the whole of our. Unexamined, really. Unexamined. And this is a very extraordinary situation, isn't it? It's very extraordinary. And all we've got to do is look. And then the th immediately the uh, lie is, uh, is exposed, isn't it? The lie, and what is the lie? The lie is that I have ever, ever, ever in my path confronted anybody. And I say for myself, I've never, never, never been face to face with anybody. It's always been face to space, face to space. In other words, in other words, Maureen, the wonderful truth, God's truth, God's truth, is that we are built for loving. And uh, uh, society, language, the club, is set up to deny that obvious truth. And yet it's the very thing that we, we want mm -hmm. and strive for. When you were talking about the looking that we've been told what to see, um, my sense is that we look, but we look perhaps in the wrong direction. Yes, indeed. We look that away. All we have to do is look this away. And immediately the truth is revealed, isn't it? <coughs> yes. Well, uh, one or two. Um, uh, suggestions about when we get in the tube, you two get in the tube and you and I get in the tube together, uh, some perhaps rules here even, you know, I, I, I think the prime rule is that we really are going by present evidence, what is given now and not imported into the situation uh, by memory, imagination, wish fulfillment and so on. And another thing uh, is that we're not going in that tube together to love one another or have nice feelings uh, or, or to um, see an aura of the other person, I don't know, insight into their personality. We're not going in the tube for any of that thing, any of that stuff, uh, simply to tell the truth about one, one or two basic uh, things that I shall mention. For the, for the prime one is, how many faces are there in the tube? Now, it, it's a case of counting, one, two. It's not a case of feelings, it's not a case of thinking, opinion. How many, I mean, it's perfectly simple. How many are there in the tube? And of course, uh, it, 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 what's at the far end of the tube is, is interesting and important, but 
that, that far end, the view at the far end, very familiar. But it's the view, the prime, primarily in this experiment, one is concerned with what we're given at the near end, because that is unfamiliar. That is the unvisited country. That is the, the, the strange land. I would say almost the magic land. Might have something to do with heaven even. <laughs> Mightn't it? So the weight of attention is not on the far end uh, in order to investigate that in detail, uh, but to, to use that uh, uh, for purposes of comparison with the near end of the two. So is that, uh, is that the way you see the experiment? So simply, it's really concerned with what do I actually see right now? That's right. So this experiment, like all of the, our experiments really, about our identity, about what we're like in our own experience as first person singular, present tense. And it's not a matter of feeling. It's not a matter of understanding. It's a matter of simply looking. Looking. On our own authority. Hmm? On our own authority. As That's right, authority. Being, being our own authority. By parents, by That's right. So are we ready to have a go? Yes. Well, perhaps uh, the demonstration with the tube, then. Um, incidentally, you see, you, you have a kind of a, a, a perhaps an atmospheric problem here. The pollution in the tube, if, I'm, if, if I may be so, so rude as to call it uh, pollution, uh, is a double thing in your case. But, but in our case, you see, there's just half the pollution in the tube between you and me uh, that there is here, which is an interesting thing. We have ventilation in the tube, you see, at the top here. Demonstration. Oh, there it is. Very simple, isn't it? Very simple. Yes, Douglas. As you said, nobody told us what to see in the paper bag. They didn't think of it, did they? No. <laughs> and, uh, that, that's a supermarket paper bag. Uh, we were told what to see in the supermarket, but they never told us what to see when we met somebody, not in the supermarket, but in one of the bags of the supermarket. Therefore, so, so we see. Viewers get to look at, at you at the other end of the bag. Mm. So, are we ready to yeah. begin? Yeah. Well, here, here we are, you and I all set to do this experiment. <coughs> and uh, uh, here's my face uh, here on your television screen. And you have the tube, uh, and you fit uh, one end of the tube around my face, and the other end of the tube around your face. And then we're all set. OK? Well, now. <coughs> Uh, looking at the far end of the tube and uh, the near end of the tube uh, simultaneously, note the difference. Total difference, isn't there, between the scene at the near end and the scene at the far end. So my first question to you is, how many faces are there in the tube at this time? On present evidence, is it one face Two fa or two faces? Is it face to face, or is it face here and space at your end of the tube? And do you think you have ever, ever, ever in your life been face to face with anyone? Is, hasn't it always been like this? And isn't it an amazing, extraordinary thing that we should be so conned and taken in 
uh, by language which says always we are face to face with people. An extraordinary thing uh, that we should be so uh, conned and deceived by language uh, and the rules of the club. <clears throat> well now, let's uh, study in a little more detail, please, uh, the difference between the far end and the near end of the tube at this time. And uh, uh, the obvious crude differences, aren't there? Obvious differences. And at the far end, why, there's a, a pair of eyes and a nose uh, and a mouth and all that stuff. And uh, your end, I think, is absolutely, absolutely clear of it. All that stuff is gone, absent from your end. On present evidence, of course, you can imagine the stuff there. I'm talking about what you can actually see. And this is so important because, you know, it means, doesn't it, that you and I are not confronting one another and that you are busted wide open for me at this time. Not because you're a very nice person, a sweet person, loving person, <clears throat> but simply because you are looking to see. Not because you understand anything about this, because I don't really either. Uh, nor because you're feeling anything about the situation, but you're actually seeing what is going on. Well, now, let's study in a little more detail the difference between the near end, uh, your end, and the far end here. The uh, <coughs> first uh, thing I would ask you to, to just look at is uh, the complication at the near end here. Look at Douglas's face, how extremely complicated it is, and in order to take in that detail, uh, wh why from uh, forehead down to uh, the end of my beard, uh, why you, it takes you uh, a lot of time, doesn't it, to scan that rugged terrain and work down from top to bottom. And when you have worked down, uh, taking quite a time over it, worked down from the top to the bottom, why, uh, 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 when you've got to the, to the, the end of the beard, why the forehead and eyes have gone quite uh, uh, vague and shadowy. So I don't think you can really see what's at this end. I think you can only glimpse it and it, it takes quite a time to do that. Now what a contrast uh, with your end where I think there's clarity uh, uh, it's for you to say, you're the authority, but I think you will find that the clarity at your end, at the near end, is visible, absolutely visible, perfectly seen instantly. So you, the true seeing, the perfect seeing, the timeless seeing is going on surely at your end and not at this end. How well, how could it go on at this end? You're aware, aware at, at your end and uh, you're aware of what is at the far end. The difference being total. And uh, uh, look at the opacity here at the far end, the solidity. In total contrast, I think, to the transparency at your end, which goes on and on forever, doesn't it? Huge, huge uh, road, really, going on from where you are uh, forever and ever. Whereas this end of the tube is a cul-de-sac, isn't it? Uh, here, uh, the road stops and it blocks by Douglas's face. What a contrast. And, uh, and um, look at the, look at the, um, uh, 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 look at the, how small that face is uh, at this end compared with a very wide, boundless uh, capacity for it at your end. And look at the colour here. Look at the tints of my face, cheek, cheeks, and uh, uh, lips, and so on. How could you take in those colours if you had any colour at all? Total contrast in every respect, surely. 
And look at the movement of my lips, you see. Now, how could you take on, uh, how could you take in uh, that movement if you had any movement where you are? Are you not stillness for these movements? Are you not colorless for taking in these colors? Are you not eyeless for taking in these eyes and these features? Always the tail is of asymmetry, isn't it? Contrast between the near end uh, where you are and the far end where I am. <clears throat> and we say and we are told uh, that we are face to face. What an incredible confidence trick and how damaging, surely. You and I are not confronting one another now, are we? You are busted wide open for Douglas at this time. And the contrast uh, between uh, you and me has to be total in order that you shall receive my face into your space. And if you had a face there for keeping me out with I mean, well, you wouldn't be able to see me, would you? I should be invisible. You've got to be open. It's obvious you've got to be open for me. How could we resist uh, this truth? Isn't it extraordinary uh, that we uh, pretend uh, to be confronting one another out in the world there? Well, now, this, I think this situation, uh, this tube, is really like a centrifuge or a butter churn, uh, which churns out uh, material at this end, my end, and why awareness at your end. It separates them. So <clears throat> that your end is entirely free. I think you will see that your end is entirely free from matter, on present evidence, and this end, Douglas's end, is entirely free from uh, uh, consciousness or uh, awakeness and that stuff at this end. In other words, this end is a thing for observing, and uh, at your end, you are a no thing uh, for uh, looking at what is presented here. I am on show for you there as a thing on show to you who are no thing but awareness. You are busted wide open for me. Well, you, you might say, well, uh, uh, yes, but is Douglas a, a cardboard cutout? Surely you're being nasty to poor old Douglas when you see him as not equipped with uh, a mind, consciousness, and all that stuff. Well, where would you find, where would you find uh, Douglas's consciousness, if any? Would you find it lurking in those uh, eyes, in the pupils of those eyes, two little hobgoblins of consciousness stuck in there? I, you know, I, I think it was a crazy idea that is. What would it look like? And yet you feel that Douglas uh, is conscious as well as you. Well, uh, where will you locate uh, his awareness? Well, if now continuing to look steadily at uh, the far end and me, look at what you're looking out of, and you will see, I think, that this capacity, this space, has no marks of your own. It has no laundry marks. It is absolutely transparent and clear, isn't it? Absolutely free of any marks uh, which will, will mark it out or label it as your own personal property. Isn't it good enough? Isn't it awake enough? Isn't it big enough, alert enough to do for Douglas and indeed for everyone? So the awesome truth surely is that the consciousness at your end 
is not a personal property at all. And it's not a consciousness, it is the consciousness. And uh, there is a Hindu scripture, an Upanishad, which says, uh, surprisingly perhaps, only God sees, only God is awake, only God is aware. And there's a Sufi uh, saying to the same effect, only God is awake and conscious, and only God sees. In that case, uh, what's going on at your end, and who is doing the seeing, if it has no marks of your own or Douglas's or any particular marks of any particular individual? No labels there. Now, it seems to me an awesome, marvelous, marvelous thing that what's looking out of your end is the seer, the one seer in all beings. And it's not you looking out of a pair of eyes at me, is it? It is you, busted wide open for me now. Not because you're a nice person, because you're truthful and uh, you are busted wide open to receive Douglas and to be, to be the seer of Douglas and of everything else in the whole wide world. At your end is the one seer of all things which are seen. We well, say that's a pretty, that's a pretty marvelous and daring thing to say. But surely the evidence is there. The seeing at your end is not your property. It is surely vast enough, awake enough, and real enough, and uh, impersonal enough to do for all creatures. Who you really, really, really are is looking at uh, one of the things in the world and that is Douglas's face. And, you see, this is an extraordinary situation now, is it not? A marvelous intimacy, I should say, and how different, how incredibly different uh, from the club set up where we are ha ha ha, face to face, confronting one another in a kind of hell. How different. Here we have, surely, double, double intimacy. And what is this double intimacy? Uh, you can say now to me, surely, Douglas, uh, there I have your appearance. There I have your face. There I have your appearance, which you so kindly gave to me because I don't have one of my own. I mean, it may not be a very good appearance for you to take on this moment, but it'll do, won't it? Uh, you can say to me, uh, if you please, I think you can say to me, there I have your appearance, here I am your reality. Now that is a true intimacy, and I think it is divine intimacy. And it's all to do with, I think, uh, the one seer uh, whose na other name, one of whose other names is love. And that one is open, exposed, naked and open to all the things in her or his world. And that is who you really, really, really are at this time. The one who is busted open to embrace the whole world. And uh, please accept my congratulations. That is the end of the experiment and I would just wish you the best of luck in living it, because if you now just drop the tube, uh, let, it, let it down, and just c continue to look at Douglas's face for a moment, you will see from now on you don't need any tube to see this vision of who you really, really, really are. Thank you very much. <laughs>